Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama. Welcome to our podcast. Today we're covering the animated cult classic Monster House. Yes, and this is yet another one of our favorite and underrated animated films. With it being its 16th anniversary, yes, believe it or not, this year, we decided yes. to finally give this scary good time a review. Yes. And before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, and call notification to some future podcasts and we'll follow this video. Scary good time. <laughs> yes. I can't believe that we did this part of the cult favorites podcast, but it never got its own devoted podcast. Yeah. Which it truly deserves, so now it's getting it. Yeah. And we watched it yet again. Yeah. And enjoyed it just as much as the first time. Yes. And the second time. I think, and the third time. Yes. <laughs> I like you can keep track of how many times we've seen this movie because it being this old, we've seen it multiple times. There was a point we watched it every year in October. Mm -hmm. And the great thing is, it's unique as far as movies go. It's something different. It has that feel, kind of like if you think of Stranger Things, where you have a, uh, a period of time, there's innocence, mm -hmm. and the kids are outside playing and having fun, and all these strange things happen that can't be explained, and then they've got these... Um, you know, these uh, legends that are yes. going on about what's happening at this house and what happens with this person. And throughout the course of the movie, you find out what's really going on and it reaches a climax and then there's a happy ending. Yes. So these are the type of movies that we don't get anymore. Right. And they're real. And this one was just really creative and taking that concept and making it sort of like uh, like how those Scooby-Doo movies were if they had zombie island like what if those legends you always hear about in the neighborhoods was actually real so I really like they actually took full advantage urban legends that's what right I mean. urban yeah. legends what if the urban legends that the kids tell each other well if it was actually true and not just some out of a book or something you know they made up and you know, can't be plausible well here they try to make this concept of a living house plausible and it's not friendly like in Kanto. <laughs> and we learned by watching the special features, excuse me guys, that all the actors were captured by motion capture. Yes. And then the animated versions of the characters were all based on their movements and everything they were doing. And it was really interesting because, of course, when they were, they were working on green screen, they had to pretend all these things that were there and these objects yes. that were there that weren't. And then they took it and translated it into this wonderful movie. Right. So the animation is really spectacular, first of all. Yes. And you can probably, you can tell it is a little older based on the designs and how it's being done because of how people feel on motion capture. But for 2006, it was really kind of ahead of its time in a way because you weren't even thinking motion capture, whether you knew about it before mm -hmm. or after the fact, you don't really think motion capture looking at it. It doesn't look like it doesn't look like it was that at all. It looks like it was really just animated regularly. We also learned that the characters themselves they decide to do them looking more mm, how do they describe them? they want them to look a little more weird is how they described You're right. They looked really normal in the book, but they wanted to do something different. Right. And so they made them look different, and they changed the story just enough to give it that really um, horror movie edge. Right. And but not too horrible where younger people can't watch right. it as well. And this ended up inspiring. Looks like inspiring other movies like Paranorman, Coraline. 
and other films from Laika that sort of have this dark edge to them. And these are the types of movies you can say these are horror movies for kids, or like Goosebumps, where it's not too far into where okay, your kids should be watching it, but it doesn't just say it's scary and then doesn't do anything. It actually is scary, but not being gruesome and gory and violent. Now this movie was a presentation by Robert Zemeckis and Steven Spielberg. Yeah, Steven Spielberg. <laughs> And so, the more you learn about who's involved, and the actors as well, then there was just no way this couldn't come out as spectacular yeah. a production as it was. And just a few of the actors that appear in it are Steve Buscemi, mm -hmm. Buscemi, I'm sorry, his correct pronunciation is Steve Buscemi, <laughs> uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal, Kevin James, Nick Cannon, Jason Lee, Catherine O'Hara, yes. Kathleen Turner, Fred Willard, and a whole lot more. And... They were perfect at casting them to fit the characters, personalities, even for the ones that didn't have a lot of lines. Yes. They were just spot on. Yes. And it was really meant for them to play all these characters because you really can't imagine now watching it like, okay, could they, could they had someone else here? Could they have someone else? Because this person fit better. And there are times where you think, hey, it's not like they really wanted to have this person here, but they got a substitute. We hear that a lot with sound alikes or look alikes. But for here, it looks like they were really made for these particular people in mind to do it. And they fit perfectly. And you can't imagine someone else being in these roles, either the kids or the adults or Never Cracker or any of them because they all fit so well and they brought the characters to life. It was great how the story starts off it's just a normal day, a normal uh, Halloween starting right. off, and nothing special is going to happen. They don't even put on any costumes. They put some stuff on their faces. They're wondering if they're too old or not to go get candy. Yes. And so you end up with this trio of kids that are friends. Well, two of them are friends, and then a third one becomes a friend. Mm -hmm. And again, the urban legend comes into play, and it was brilliant the way the story was written where you get your backstory, and then it unfolds the truth about this house, that the urban legend is uh, a walk in the park compared to the truth about right, this house. Right. And then you have all this action and adventure, you do have some horror elements, but it's a perfect balance of everything. Yes. And then when you really get to the action part, it gets so exciting. You're on the edge of your seat. I don't care whom you are. You're knowing that this is animated. You're knowing it's not real, but it's just so well done. Of course, you got Zemeckis and Spielberg. It's so well done that you just get lost in the story itself. Right. The movie, you don't even realize that that much time has passed and it seems like you just started and before you know it there's a climax you find out the truth mm -hmm. the day is saved not thanks to the Powerpuff Girl <laughs> and then the movie's over and you're wanting more and you're going oh and you're going is there any freaking way there can be a sequel? But there can't. Right. The way it ends. I wish there could be. Yes. The way it ends is like a one and done story. There was at one point they were considering doing maybe a spiritual successor or have been another story like Monster House and based off of a legend and you find out it's real but it would like maybe the same universe but with, with uh, the idea, the same concept with different kids and a different... Uh, type of story that was being passed around, but it looks like nothing really came of it. I think it was just a passing thought or rumor, and then not, nothing happened. You still only have this. We also thought about how when we were watching this, DJ and Chowder reminded us of Toby and, and Jim. Yes, yes, Toby and Jim reminded us of them very, very much. It was that same type of movie where you have the buddy duo and then you have the girl who comes in because one of the guys likes the girl so Jenny is Claire here. Yes. <laughs> and it was the same type of feel, the same type of presentation except for you don't have magic and fantasy right. and so forth. Right. Again, it's just supposed to be a slice of life horror. Right. Which is something you really hardly ever see. Right. So I think there should be a genre called slice of life horror. There isn't but today, I'm going to claim there is a genre called Slice of Life Horror, and Monster House 
It was the beginning of it. Right. And I like that, you know, they still put in lots of comedy in there, especially with some of the people that got doing the voices, like John Heater, and uh, the dialogue and stuff they say. They see these really smart a quips to each other, and the kids say some things to the teenagers. And there's one running gag in here where Chowder, you know, likes... Uh, Jenny, and it's hilarious because he said he doesn't want to do any of this stuff. He's terrified of everything. He screams so much. You wonder how he has a voice anymore. And every time he says he's not going to do it, she says she's going to do it. He's like, yeah, okay. And then this, that's it. And he looks at him like, really? <laughs> so, it's a wonderful movie to watch. This is the perfect month to watch it. If you have seen Monster House, let us know what you think in the comments below. Is it one of your favorites like it is ours? And if you haven't seen it, it's not available on streaming as far as I know, mm -mm. so you'll have to purchase it. So take a look on Amazon. It is a Columbia Pictures movie. So it's, co it's possibly available on Prime, not sure, but again, I don't think it's available for streaming. So fortunately, we purchased it. I right. loved it so much, I had to buy it. And uh, you're going to love it too, so just go ahead, buy it, and come back and thank us later. And since it's a 2006 movie, you may get lucky enough to find it at um, a thrift store mm -hmm. we haven't seen it at the dollar any dollar store yet so go ahead and give it a try and see can you find it yes and if you haven't already subscribe for updates and weekly videos on your favorite anime series anime shows and all things animation yes and thank you so much for supporting us we really appreciate you if you love this share it family and friends via a community tab or however else you do your sharing and if you want us to check out your channel just tell us the name of the channel in the comments below. Better yet, leave a link. We'll check it out and we'll be happy to follow you and give you our support as well. Yes. So, thank you so much for watching. I'm Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a tuned day. Peace.